you'll do whatever you need to do for your kids in order to make them feel happy. Even if you fail at it, you're still going to keep trying. Parenting 101. Hey. Right. <laughs> Stop thinking it's a rule Through book. animation. Oh, bro. <laughs> and it's all different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. Each kid is different. Same food, same house. You get a whole nother personality. <laughs> Thanks for the setup, Matt. I got you. Good. See, I didn't even have to say it. It's the guest. You don't even be here normally. So it's like, I, you it's know. okay, Poppy. No, don't. don't <laughs> Welcome to season two of Iman Amongst Men. The show that takes an honest look at what it is to be a man in today's world. We don't shy away from topics most people are too afraid to talk about. We gonna take it all the way there. It's season two, y'all. Let's get it. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men, brought to you by Uninterrupted. I'm Iman Shumper here with my big brother, Ari. Ari, go on and give a what's up to the people. What's up, people? And today we are joined by another special guest. <laughs> we got a former NFL player, wide receiver, and mm. Academy Award winner. Mm. Give it up for Matthew Cherry. Give it up. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> It. The applause. I yeah, like it. yeah. Got the sound effects live on show. <laughs> I live. love it. We go live here. I love it. <laughs> now, what's up, y'all? Ain't nothing, man. You good? I'm great, man. I'm good. Glad to be here, man. You're early. Mm-hmm. Punctual. Gotta be. Love it. Right, yeah. That's yeah. what us being on set on time. Here yeah, we're getting out on time. <laughs> That's like being on set. You know how it is. Yes, sir. Uh, the theme of today's show is going to be called uh, You See It, You Could Be It. Uh, when you hear that phrase, what comes to your mind? Man, just uh, everything, man. Like, you know, I feel like to achieve anything in life, you got to see it first. You know, yeah. it's like being a kid and, you know, dreaming about one day being in the NFL or being in the league. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's, you see it and then you try to work towards it and make it real. Straight up. You feel like you uh, you tap in most to your, your inner child? Yeah, a little bit. You know, you know, I'm, I'm from Chicago as well. Yeah. And, um I don't know, man, you know how it was back in the day. Like, growing up, there wasn't, like, a big film and, like, TV scene in Chicago back in the day, and um, like, especially in the 80s. And uh, so I, I didn't know what it was going to be. I thought maybe it might be music, maybe, like, be at a label or something. And um, it wasn't really until I got on set for the first few times and, like, you know, I worked on Girlfriends as a production assistant oh, and seeing, like, Debbie Allen directing and Marbra Kakil and, you know, Selene McKill, her husband, and just Millicent Shelton, all these great directors – and it wasn't really until I saw people that looked like me doing it that I was like, man, that might be tight. I want to try to see if I can learn how to do that too. Right. So I think it's just all within that theme. Just you know, you see somebody that's doing what you want to do, and you know, you work towards it. So you ever did you you took classes and so not not like I didn't go to film school. So like I went to University of Akron on a football scholarship. Right. Um, you know, they didn't have any like big film program, but they did have media production and radio. So. I uh, worked in radio a lot. A lot of it is similar, you know, like just the whole live show, being on set, kind of making yeah. sure people get the do the, the multiple takes, getting the drop right and all that. It's right. very similar and very team oriented, you know, just like how y'all got y'all show and exactly. it takes however many people to do it. So that was like kind of the the seating ground. And um, I knew like I want to do some entertainment and know exactly what. Ohio didn't have a lot of film going on either. <laughs> but uh, when I got to the league, bouncing around and stuff, I uh, got a chance to go to L.A. one time. And just like seeing everything being about film and TV, I was like, man, this might be the next next move to make. Oh. And made a couple connections, got out here. That's dope. It's it's so crazy. There's so many people that uh, they don't really know how to go for it, so yeah. to speak. Um, or they they end up in that that time period in between playing and yeah. finding their identity <laughs> of what they want to do. Right. Or, uh, it, it's cool to hear you say that because I know a lot of people would feel like I know I would at least assume like man to even get a shot at directing yeah. some or being that you know hands on with any project yeah. worth a damn I would have to go to school and I would have to do this cause, and I, I would naturally think that yeah. you know what I'm saying so to hear you say it like no, oh, I didn't go to film school. I- well, you know what it is like film school is cool honestly I wish I had a chance to do it honestly um, but the thing about film school is like you're getting all the knowledge, like you're learning film theory or, you know, breaking down the, all the classic movies. You know, you're, you're really getting the the education behind it straight up. But at the end of the day, somebody that went to film school and somebody who didn't and they both trying to get on set, you got to get on set. You know what I mean? And like that was really more my education, just basically learning it kind of in front of me on the fly, you know, being like going from being on the Ravens and like 06 and then like I'm being a PA on girlfriends, like getting coffee and picking up director chairs and moving around and doing whatever yeah. needed to be done. So, um, you know, 
I also think it's like that athlete mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like if you achieve a goal that all your life you're told, like, man, only X amount of people make it to the high school, only yeah. X amount of people play in college, only X amount of people make it to the league, you kind of go had this mentality like, man, I could do anything. Like if I really go hard at it, you sure know, enough. and that was always my thing. And I actually really appreciated starting on the bottom, like as a production assistant. And when I was in the league, I went like I was some star or something. So I had a lot of time to really think about what I was going to do next. Cause I was always getting cut and moving from city to city. So um, it, it was, that helped a lot. Just not really getting all the playing time and things. So, and you know how it is. Like a lot of guys, they don't think about their future. Sure they just like, shit, I'm going to try to play for 20 years and, you know, get that big bankroll Real and I'm going to chill, Real you tough. know, but, you know, as you know, it's not like that for a lot of guys. Most guys, you know, get that two, three-year career, and then you got to figure it out. Real so. talk. Real yeah. talk. It's, and, and after you done playing, I'm telling you, they don't they don't hit you up and be like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it ain't no, like, help you along the way. Oh, no, it not ain't at all. none of that. They probably hit you up and be like, hey, you know, you – uh, the, the insurance stuff is going to change a little bit. <laughs> right, right, right. A yeah, lot of it. Yeah, they yeah. always trying to like not pay you for what you worked for. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like, I, you, you know, if you didn't get that surgery already, ah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's real. You will call this number here. <laughs> oh, for real, they give you the run around? Oh, yeah. No, they, yeah. they'll tell you who to call. They just, just don't call them. No, nah, like, it's crazy. Like, in the league, like, in the league it's like, I know, I know dudes that got hurt in like 06, 05, and like still to this day have been going back to the doctor, getting a second opinion, going back to the doctor. Say, like they just keep delaying it until, you know, Kaz ain't here no more. Bro, that's, that's wild. <sighs> Bro, that's sport over there, the way that, that, that set up, that football. Were you happy line. to get out of there? You know, like I wish that I would have been able to have like that cool career. Like I never thought I was going to be being undrafted coming from a small school. I never really thought I was going to have like the 20 year career or whatever. So it was cool, man. Met a lot of good cats. Like, you know, played with Fred Taylor, Jimmy Smith, um, you know, Chad Johnson. Like, you know, met a lot of cool dudes, but just wasn't my path, you know. And I always joke with people like I get more love for being a former player than I ever did when I was actually playing. You know, end up on ESPN on some right. like film stuff, not on an athlete tip. So, you know, it's cool. Everybody got their own journey. All right. When you, when you were done uh, playing, yeah. when did you know like, all right, I want to be a filmmaker? I, I really didn't know until I got to LA. Like I knew mm -hmm. I wanted to work in film yeah. and like there were a couple like chance situations where I met some folks that had, uh, hit me to a couple programs that were like in LA. Like for example, there was this uh, young lady, her name was Teresa Lee Montgomery. She was working as a production assistant and she was like, yo, there's this program called Street Lights you should look into. And it's just all about sharing information, right? Like I have the time, that's the biggest thing that's holding us back, we just don't know. And she hit me to this game and um, I applied and got in and that was really the thing that moved me to LA to become a production assistant. So okay. it was like this really cool nonprofit program that teach you all the game about like, this is how you be on the walkie. This is when you on set, this is how you move. Like don't be trying to be like a fan, you know, mm -hmm. make sure you cool. Even if you bring in, you know, Beyonce or somebody out there trailer, you gotta act like you've been there before. So it was all those kind of little nuggets and um, yeah, it was great. So you yeah, you just not gonna tell me the special sauce on how you become a film director? <laughs> No, nah, man. I mean, it's different for everybody, you know. Like some people do the film school thing, but and you they told me you ain't have to go to school. I don't want to go to school. I want to just get in how I fit in. You know what it is though. Like at the end of the day, no matter if you went to school or not, like you just got to make some. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I feel like everybody got an idea that's film worthy. At least a couple. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think for me being in LA. Growing up, I always thought movies had to be these multi-million dollar, exactly. hundred million joints that like, you know, blown explosions, action sequences. Like I thought that's what a movie was, but it wasn't until I got to LA, like uh, ended up meeting Ava DuVernay. She did a movie, her first film, I Will Follow. That joint cost 50,000, all shot in one location. Like mm -hmm. I didn't even know this was really how you could make a movie. Right. And so just like learning that info and then going back, like watch She's Gotta Have It, similar thing, like kind of low budget. So. You know, you try to work your way up gradually, and that's really what I did was like start on like super low budget music videos and get my foot on that. Like next one we gonna get a dolly, then we gonna get a crane. You know, really you tough. just kind of gradually learning and getting comfortable. And you know, sometimes you get a win, sometimes you fail, but I think really ain't nothing to it but to do it. So you know, you kind of like you feel like the day you became filmmakers when you start making your first. Movie. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I was PAN on Heroes. That was the second show I was on, and like I was like. I went to all the crew members because it was a very wasteful show, like equipment laying around on the Sunset Gower mm. lot. And I was just like, yo, man, like y'all shoot Monday through Friday. Y'all got all these lights hanging around. Y'all ain't thinking about them. Like 
would y'all mind if I borrow something that. on the weekend? Let me get that. And that's how I was like putting little shoes together and kind of grew from there. Fire. Yeah, man. Gotta, gotta work with what you got. <laughs> that was bro, man. That was like uh, uh, Hebrew. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy too. Yep. Yeah. Bro, bro was, uh, he was um, going to school, but he wasn't going, he wasn't enrolled. <laughs> Yeah, 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 he snuck in some they instructor's class. In and then they said when they was throwing out the stuff at the end of the year, he like, nah, let me get all that. Yeah. He tell the janitors and everybody, like, let me get that, I that's need it. that. People that really want it, like, they gonna find yeah, a way. Yeah, that's like, what's crazy. They gonna find a way. But it's, it's you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even think to ask sometimes. Like, sometimes, like, that's, luckily for you, you thought it through, like, man, are they ain't using these, let me just use yeah. these. Like, it's so many people. No, that's that, the fuck it factor, though. Like, cause most people wouldn't even, cause that's like, you that's know, that's trouble. Saying. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like they could have been like, yo, what the Like, he fuck? trying to do like, some shit yeah, after like, yeah, he trying to do some shit, Patch. He on some shit. But yeah, no, I get why people would be like, you know, timid to do something like hey, that. But, but it's also like. go for it though, I love that yeah. though. You're pushing that message, you gotta go for it, ain't But it? he had a different mentality. Can't like say he, nothing but no. He's used to, that's, that's the it. thing though, like y'all used to that. Like imagine somebody who's not used to that. You yeah. think that's the athlete in him? That's definitely the athlete. In him. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I mean, and yeah. also it's like, you know, I always tell people like, it's cool to have a dream and a goal to be something bigger, right? Like starting off, like I didn't know if I was gonna be a director or what, but you gotta still do a good job in the job you're doing. So if you're an assistant, you gotta kill that shit. And like, Shut once up. you kill it, people gonna take notice and be like, oh man, they got some like a great uh, possibility for their future. So I'm gonna like invest in them mm -hmm. and try to give them some looks. It's always the people that be trying to do the next job and ignore the job they currently at that sometimes it's a little tricky for them to kind of make that move. But if you just focus on what you're doing and like kind of plan on the side, but just focus on what you're doing, you're going to be good. People going to take notice and hopefully try to help you out. Straight up. Yo, that's like the what we was talking about with uh, Vernon. And he was talking about how, uh, like business plans and shit outside of sports. Like if it would – if he was uh, fucking up on the field or if whatever was falling off, they'd like go to that and blame that. And it's like yeah. what he said, that's kind of the solution to that. It's like as long as you doing good at the job you at, like nobody's really gonna question you. Yeah. Like you're gonna get the shot. Yeah, man. Do your job. Keep right, your head your down. Yeah. That's the Chicago shit. <laughs> Say word. That, that plays a big part too, man. Just that Midwest mentality of like, you know, I ain't know nobody that ever made it in Hollywood, but you know, you know if you do work hard enough, you got a shot. We don't know nobody but uh, Stilo Brim. Yeah, shout out that's my guy Stilo. too. <laughs> shout out right, our boy Stilo, man. You no, made it, Stilo boy. Green. <laughs> Remember Stilo oh, Green? Oh, Stilo Green. I forgot, yeah, you Stilo Green. <laughs> Stilo Green, man, shout out my boy, man. My boy, Blue, you my boy. <laughs> Oh, bro, you yeah. made it to Hollywood, boy. You did that, boy. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculousness. Yeah, that's a good guy. Right Since there. we speaking of it, though, like how, to, how has being from Chicago like really shaped your work? Man, you know, I think it's just that relatability. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I think Chicago just really breeds real people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you, you got to kind of navigate a lot of different things. Like, you know, the gang culture was a little crazy in the 90s. You know, but if you was an athlete, you got to pass. So it, it was great relationships. I think relatability. I think, like, family members that just are, are going to mm. make sure that they keep you grounded and, you know, keep you focused and – you know, when your mom and your dad or whoever is like working they ass off to make sure that you're good, you know, you got to go into the world with that same mentality that you're going to try to pay that forward. So, mm -hmm. straight up. Yeah, you, you can relate to that. Always. I'm a, <laughs> um, with Chicago, like for me, it just made leaving Chicago easy. Like when, when I would go to other states, I felt like it was way calmer. Like, yeah. Yep. I didn't, like, I'm like, wait, I gotta be way more on point at home. Like, mm -hmm. and I would go to other places and be like, y'all like moving slow. Or I'd be like, you oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you start feeling like, like you from the only place that like, or New York, where it's just like, y'all just moving too fast. Right. Y'all <laughs> yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah. just, y'all gotta stop. Right? Yeah, no, in New York, you gotta be ready for that. Yeah, but it's like, you see so many different things. Like you say, you see so many different temperaments in Chicago. Yeah. You gotta be ready for so much stuff. Um. And again, you gotta find solutions to everything. In Chicago. Yeah. It's always fucking find a solution game um, sure. in Chicago. But it, it, I think it shape you you better as a person. Mm -hmm. Just it, I feel ready going yeah. into the world leaving Chicago. Yeah, ain't too many scenarios you ain't already dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Like you just 
It'd be all right. Yeah. They did 18 over there, you'd be all right. <laughs> and, and that people aspect, like, yeah. there's a, you know, it's similar to New York, not as concentrated, but Chicago does have a huge, like, mix of different people, different cultures, yeah. uh-huh. to where you can, you know, it's easier to relate for me, especially, like, us yeah. being ethnic. <laughs> it's like, it's easier to relate when you go somewhere and there's a bunch of different cultures versus oh, yeah. going somewhere and there's nothing for you. Oh, yeah. Like, like that's how I felt in Cleveland. Sorry, Cleveland. <laughs> like yeah. I felt like there was nothing for me, like culturally. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, you like, would have had to go too deep. You got to go deep on. Well, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, not to say that they don't yeah. have any culture, but it's just like, like it's not like Chicago where there's like there's a pocket yeah. dedicated strictly to this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or I can go somewhere and just see this. Yeah, yeah. we can't. Hey, Cleveland is cool, man. We can't ask everybody to be Chicago. Like, you know, yeah, no, man. I'm neutral. We're not, so nah, that's we're yeah. not yeah. asking that. We're not doing that to y'all. We're not doing that to y'all. <laughs> like, I would never do that. I would never do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what lessons uh, from football do you think you brought? to uh, acting, film, not acting, uh, TV and film? Um. You know, I think it's all team oriented. You know what I mean? Like knowing that uh, you could be the best player out there or the worst player, but you know, you gotta make sure everybody's on the same page to get to the end goal. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember you know, you show up on set, there's a call sheet, 150 people on there, you know what I mean? Like, What's that like? So you gotta do the call sheet if it's your shit? Well, like they got like assistant directors and things that do that, but like when you he like yeah somebody else did no that. no, but like when you a PA like you got to learn how to kind of put it all together. What's the most you ever did on a call sheet? How many people? Shoot, man, on Heroes, man, I had like two fifty on a crew because you know big VFX and all that. So oh, wait, every night in crews? charge of like, every night. Um, not, not fully in charge of it, but like certain elements, like we were more like for the cast. So we had like twenty two main cast members. So you know you just making sure everybody be where they need night. to be at. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Every night you got to put them together for 12 hours. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And it's gritted. It, it look intimidating when you see it on the paper. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. But, but they, yeah, what they lay it out like, this just person just sheet. need to. And they going, you going to get like five of them throughout the day. Yeah. They going to make sure that they oh. assistance is just handing them out. <laughs> they make sure it's one in your trailer. They they be on your oh, ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, you got to <laughs> be there on time. They going to keep giving you sides. Yeah, they be punctual. It's dope though, it keep you on point, but it's just like. It's a lot. Yeah, okay. like when you see, cause that's why I asked him, cause yeah. I'm like, when you see the call sheet, I done seen the call sheet with just the top actors, uh, the makeup people, mm-hmm. hair people, like it'll tell us mm-hmm. you know, when everybody's there. So it's hard enough to try and find somebody in that and make sure that they are where they're at or they gonna be over here with, you know, one of the co-stars or whatever. Yeah. Are they on base camp or are they at the other uh, location? Oh, damn, so y'all do that to know where people are actually at. That's why I said, how many people did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about 250, damn. God damn, yeah, boy. Yeah, man. Yeah, Coordinating man. 250 people what? day to day is insane. Yeah. I know you hey, lost it a bunch again, of times. Again, bravo oh, to always. whoever doing that job, bravo. <laughs> God damn. God sure, damn, we need sure. people like you. Yeah, man. But you know, it's all very team oriented, man. It's like, it's like you know, when you in the league, like people that getting you the water. You know, you got to sh- make sure you show them love. People that are hitting you with the massage yeah. and the trainers. Like, yeah. it, it, it's more than just the people on the field that make like a really good organization move forward. And it's really the same thing. Um, being in film, like starting off as a production assistant for me was great because like I see all that it takes to make a production. I seen it from the ground up Mm -hmm. where like sometimes you have directors that come in to upset and they never done them jobs before. So they think it's just like they start barking at people and they think things supposed to happen a way that they not normally would work because they haven't done it before. So I think the team element for me is just really the biggest thing that connects it all and just having appreciation for everybody. You know, mm-hmm. when we wrap a set, I'm showing love to everybody, the grip, the, the, you know, the, the, the boom operator. Like, you got to treat everybody like family because just because you're directing don't mean that your job is just as important as anybody else because you wouldn't have a, a smooth production if everybody went on their P's and Q's. What we do without y'all, man. <laughs> straight up. Right. What we do without y'all, man. <laughs> they trying to keep a straight face. You know what That's okay. Like, y'all can smile, production man. Production like, yeah. Yeah, 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 It's cool, man. Y'all can smile, man. Y'all cheesing you know, back there. Not too much y'all. clapping. Not too much. <laughs> no, nah, that was the gratitude. They was just the like, cameras yeah. rolling. It was like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, much respect. What it, what what inspired you to make your, uh, your short film, Hair Love? 
Um, by the know, way, y'all gotta go see this. I appreciate shit. it. Is, no, for real, that shit is like yeah, he just I'm really about to. Yeah, I need to show my daughters that because my daughters that that's their favorite thing to do. Make me like no, no. That my dad could do it, and they're like dad, dad can't do. Every, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I could do a little something, right, something, right, but right. I was like, like, dude did a good job in that. He yeah. had to fight the big health. You know, he had to fight her first. He had to, you know, he got, that was crazy. He got in the ring, right. put him up, like, put him up. <laughs> put him, stop playing with me. Uh, but uh, he, he actually got her together. I'm like, bro, that was like a dream come true, the way he got her together. Yeah. Like, when they come together like that, it's like, bro, real life mission accomplished. You see what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Like, oh, that feeling's real. Oh, man. I've when been you get there. That, when you get that final, you dig on that dog. Oh, you don't understand the way you broke that down for oh, us, man. I appreciate it, man. Real talk. I, I wish he'd have focused on the, uh, the daddy's relief, though. Oh, after like, doing Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Get one of them. Oh, oh, bro. <laughs> like, now we can go to school. Oh, That's bro. how I be feeling. Like, now we can go now. Man, dog. It take, it take a lot of, uh, you just got to learn how to work them products, boy. Yeah. You learn how to work them products, man. You are gonna be a okay, man. All my new fathers, you, you got a little girl coming. I know it's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Get you some of them products, man. You get that detangler cream, <laughs> that spray. You get you a spray bottle, leave just water in it, yep. just water. Make sure you keep that around, man. You gonna you gonna be all right, bro. Make an Amazon list. Get a I wig brush. Get you a wig brush. A wig brush. Yeah, you gonna need that. They hair get long, it's thick, it's wavy. You know what I'm saying? Then you throw the product on there, it's hard to get through it without like pulling too hard with the comb. Yeah. So you gotta do the wig brush. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The wig brush. Uh, they use the comb. There's, there's some techniques. There's some techniques. Well, his daughter, his daughter got a little, you know, a little advantage on her hair gray, so he ain't gotta use the wig brush. So you've never done it before. There's no, there's no advantage. Water. <laughs> That's the only that's the only difference. Water. See how Dominican people act. You see how it go. <laughs> this is how Dominicans act. Man. Some a real Dominican is gonna come and approach you and legit. I love put the you Dominicans, bro. My brother is Dominican. But I'm not. Huh? That's the thing. I'm not. You just look at them. No, you, I you don't. Do. You definitely look at And them. it don't and it don't it don't have no weight because it's not like you're Dominican and you're telling me I'm Look at his like ponytail. It. Like it's not helping that he has the ponytail. It's like it's not helping. I've been telling him this since we was, like my mother is like That's funny. She what? laughs. It's funny to her. Because she it's knows not what funny. I mean. People speak Spanish to you though. It's not funny. All right, cool. It's, no one I does. I don't want to make you mad about it. Because it's saying. not funny. You're not making me mad. It's cool. I know yeah. what I am. I know what, what I am. What made you make that? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I got My you. bad. Sorry. I, we got, yeah, oh, no, no, no. Hair. Y'all good, man. I, Dominican I love, ponytails. I love the dynamic. Um, <laughs> so so it, it, we did a Kickstarter for it in 2017. Okay. And in the time when we what's were- a, What's a Kickstarter for? My bad. So a Kickstarter is like, you were, you're trying to raise money online, basically. Okay, like, cool. um, it's basically crowdfunding. Like, you're trying to raise some money. And um, I had done a couple of those on a smaller scale for a couple of my independent films that I did before. And um, the time was just, 2017, there wasn't a lot of black representation in animation. Um, at the time, there was only, like, four movies that had ever come out that had black characters in the lead. It was, like, Bebe's Kids, Princess and the Frog, uh, Home from DreamWorks, and then um, Prince of Egypt. So. Prince of Egypt. Yeah, it, it wasn't a lot of representation on that side They're of things. Like and um, for me, I thought it was, you know, film and TV and just magazines and just this whole entertainment thing. A lot of times when you're a kid, you know, you know how it is. You have a little girl or your little boy. First thing you do, you throw on a movie. For sure. And, you know, I want to keep you entertained. Check out this movie that I grew up on or check out this movie, this new movie that came out. And if you're seeing everybody in these films and animated movies are, are, are the heroes but don't look like you. You know what I'm saying the, the princess got the blonde hair, she got the dress on, but she don't look nothing like what your hair look like or don't have the same skin tone you look like. So I, I really saw that as an issue at that time. And I really wanted to create a character in Zuri that represented like a hero type character for these little girls out there that have like, you know, the, the, the 4C hair, you know, the hair that everybody kind of want to touch when they go to school and all this other stuff. And um, so that was one part of it, just more representation and animation. But then also on a father's side of tip, man, like in film and TV, you know, black dads got it bad, you know, especially back in the day, like depicted as dead beast, not present, not willing to do a lot of the little things or whatever. So I, I wanted to create a character in the dad, Steven, 
who just represented kind of all what all my friends are like. You know what I'm saying? Like if they daughter, their mom got to go to work early or she out of town for some and, you know, she got a recital or got to get to school. You don't have to get that hair together. You know what I mean? And it's more about it's like kind of demystifying that process. So people aren't like, oh, you a dad that do the hair. Let me give you a pat on the right. back. It's just like is what we, right, do what we do in this dynamic to make things move forward. And um, it's kind of normalizing that. So it really was all about that. And um, for me, I thought I saw a little window of opportunity kind of around the time we were trying to raise funds for it. And then just all these crazy things just started happening, man. Like, you know, that whole thing we were talking about earlier, you know, you get an idea and you put it out to the world. Sometimes universe, universe just be making things happen. And so like we did this Kickstarter. I had never done animation before. All my work prior was music videos, like, independent films, live action. So I went and got this cool team together, like Peter Ramsey, who did the first Into the Spider-Verse, reached out to him, like, you mind hopping on as an EP? Um, hit up uh, this other animator, Frank Abney. You're killing me. What do you mean? One second, sir. What happened? Just, just, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, okay. I'm finna learn you. Okay. He's got a thing, don't know why, against Spider-Man and the whole Spider-Verse. Gotcha, okay. Don't know why. <laughs> He Every, worked on more than that, but I <laughs> no, 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 it's not even him. It's, it's the he's mad that it keep coming up in his life. Oh, I got you. I'm sorry, yeah, this but he doesn't. He keeps trying to reject it. Somebody but. just just uh, made me uh, this this tray art piece thing, uh -huh. and they put spiders on it. Like, oh wow, spider like the spider thing is going crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's why I was like, you are kidding. <laughs> I was so yeah, like. It's hitting them at all points. I got you, I got just, you. My bad. Yeah, I got you. Well, the movie also just came out. <laughs> yeah. um, there you go. But no, no, I mean, it, you know, it, a lot of it, when I think back on it, it was just very strategic. Like, you know, I don't know animation, so I'm going to get a couple guys that I know that, like, really are doing it big. So Peter, this other animator, Frank Abney, they came on as EPs. It kind of validated. Because, you know, I know people on the outside looking in, like, yeah. you trying to do animation? You ain't never did it before. So we did that. We, do you are you familiar with uh, Vashti Harrison? She like does all these amazing children's picture books. Like uh, she just came out with one called Big. She did uh, Little Leaders uh, with Black Women in History. She did Soul Way. She got literally like fifteen different books out that are just all on the I New York Times bestseller list. My daughter's got me reading. I'm sure stuff. she got some yeah. in the in, in uh, thing. But yeah, we got we up with her like six months before her first book came out. So all these things I didn't really know was happening in the universe and the backstory. And we try to raise 75,000 and we raise that in like the first five days, which never happens. Damn. And then like by 30 days, which was the limit, we ended up raising like almost 300,000. And Damn. it was just, yeah, it was just crazy. And um, you say it's called a Kickstarter, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you funny. <laughs> No, he's for real. You got to deliver though. You got to deliver. Know. Yeah, that's the, that's I, the big I, I thing. With it. It's basically like a GoFundMe for yeah, like media. Business. Honestly, no, 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 not big business. Yeah, it's but like media. if I tell you I got a business. And I'm no, like, no, no, no. This is for the little guy. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, you can do a Kickstarter for the big. I'll, I'll give you an even better example. But they're not looking for big money. They're looking for you yeah. know just to get it started. So they don't want a fifty thousand. It could be investment. Small. You can get five dollars to a Kickstarter. You can't do that to a normal. Uh, yeah, but you, a normal, that's not like, much big of a Kickstarter. It could be as big or small as you want. Like. Oculus, like the new VR headset, like they were on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Like they raised almost like, I don't know what they raised. It was like damn 15, 20 mil on there. But it's an event. It's it's just a crowd rate, crowdfunding thing. Yeah. Somewhere you're able to kind of bring it's in online. people that you, you know. Can go online right oh, it's now, online. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm an app say, too. It's like GoFundMe. Like you can go down there and just yep. look down. It's a bunch of businesses and that I, post their own I, stuff. And if somebody like gives you money, what they get a percentage of the company. No, no, no. That's, that, that's you the, work that out with them. No, no, no. That's right? a great thing about it. It's not a percentage. It's like, it's almost selling some in advance. So like, I don't know if y'all rock with like Tesla, or Rivian, or any of these new car companies. That's kind of what they do. They they do a pre-sale and they like, all right, you give like us the sneakers. brand in advance and five, six years, whatever we get it together, then you won't get the car. That's essentially what it is. It's like for, it's, it's they're, you're pre-selling it for an exchange. So like we had different tiers, like, all right, $5, you give us $5, you'll get a keychain. You give us 10, you get a t-shirt, 40, you get the children's book. So we were doing all these different things and, um. We ended up getting a book deal off the Kickstarter because we offered a book that we didn't even have made together yet, but a book company reached out and then we ended up player. getting a, a picture book out of it too. That's player. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> that's player. No, that's it's cool, man. Like, I, I think a lot of people are scared to for to have that connotation that they're like, quote unquote, begging or like begging mm -hmm. for money online or whatever, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And like, it's not like you're begging, like you giving me some bread now, but in whenever this shit come out, you gonna get such and such in return for it. Like, and that's how we did. 
So you look at it like this shit gonna be worth it. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes things fail. You know, like it's just like anything in life. You know, sometimes like you're able to deliver, sometimes you don't. But people that are doing it, it's really less about the product. It's because they rocking with you. They like, yo, like I seen this man grind, mm-hmm. grind up. Like mm-hmm. I see his hustle. Like you know, he trying to do something for himself. So I'm gonna like kick a little bread down to him to see if he can make it happen. Oh, bro, what made you do uh, animation as opposed to live? Action. So that was important, and it's kind of back to that story I told you. Like, I thought it was important because animation is the first medium that little kids see. Oftentimes, like you know, we always gonna put on the Saturday morning cartoons or put on an animated movie, and um, I thought animation was gonna hit the kids harder than a live action. You know, like I always joke, like if we would have did this in live action, I don't even think we would have made one festival, let alone mm-hmm. like took it all the way to the Oscars. But I think there's something about animation that makes stories even that feature certain people of color, it just makes it more relatable. Like you're watching um, Coco, obviously it's about, you know, a Mexican family, but you're able to see the relatability in it. There's just something about animation that just like, the fact that you're able to see animals talking and these interesting creatures and you're able to relate to them, I think it does the same thing when it comes to just different races. And I really wanted this story to be specific in that, in its blackness, because we're talking about black hair, we're talking about all these different things, but also oh. universal. And that at the end of the day, it's like, if you got a kid, they ask you to do something, you're gonna try to figure it out. And that's really the whole theme of the story. Like you'll do whatever you need to do for your kids in order to make them feel happy. Even if you fail at it, you still gonna keep trying. Parenting 101. Hey. All right. <laughs> stop thinking it's a rule Through book. animation. Come on bro, please stop thinking it's a rule book for your parents. He's not no, gonna do that no shit. He was book. not doing that shit right. Don't nobody know okay. how it's supposed exactly. to go. Exactly. We yeah, all did nobody it wrong. know how it's supposed to go. <laughs> and it's all different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Bro. Each kid is different. Same food, same house. You get a whole nother personality. <laughs> Thanks for the setup, Matt. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't even have to say it. It's the guest. <laughs> you don't even be here normally, so it's like I, you it's know. Okay, Poppy. No, don't, don't touch, me. don't touch me. It's okay, Papa. Comedian. Uh, walk us through getting that Oscar. Yes. Yeah. For hell of crazy. Yeah, bro. exactly. Nah, bro. It, it was unlike anything I experienced in life, man. Like it. Um, to me, it represented like finally kind of making it in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if you ever feel like that when it comes to uh, even if you're in the league, it's like you could be in the league, but now feel like you made it. Like, to me, that represented, like, all the 15, 14, 15 years I've been in L.A. struggling, you know, like, trying to make rent, trying to get projects off the mm-hmm. ground, things failing, things kind of happening. And, um, yeah, it just really represented, like, damn, like, all right, finally did something that really, like, hit on a major level and, and kind of made it. It's just surreal to this day, bro. Like, mm-hmm. you know, being on that stage, getting that thing, and um, it's just the most surreal thing I've ever been a part of. And right. the cool thing is that if it never happens again, you know, at least you're in there. And I think, uh, you know, Kobe won it first, which was, was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just happy to be in that mix with former mm-hmm. athletes that got one. Dope. So that, that led to a spinoff though. Yeah. Right. Um, well, winning, working. winning that is to young love. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, oh, like, was like, no, it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of, a lot of crazy things that come from this man. Like, we uh, did a. Oh, he lightened. Nah, I'm gonna hit you. Like, I'm gonna hit you with it. Light. That was a light. That was no, 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 no. It's been crazy, bro. Like, so we got the picture book that came out. You know, that hit the bestseller list for like 42 weeks. Um, oh. Blue Ivy did our uh, audio book, uh, like a couple years ago. So I if you her. get on Audible, whatever, like audio book. So Blue Ivy's literally reading the book to to you. And oh. to me, that was important. Just knowing, like back in the day, how people was doing her hair when she was little. Everybody had something to say about it. I thought just it'd be amazing to have her be the person that's kind of teaching young kids empowerment about how their hair looks. That's right. So that was something we got a product with Dove that came out like a little hair care line that um, is specifically for like kids with curly and textured hair. That's in Target and Walmart now. And um, yeah, we got the show Young Love that's getting ready to come out on uh, HBO Max or Max. Sorry. Um, hopefully this some, sometime early fall. Can't say the exact date yet, but uh, and that's animated too. Yeah, so it's, it's like essentially a um, extension of the short film. So it takes place like three months after the events of uh-huh. uh, Hair Love. So you know, if you saw in the credits, the mom Angela's hair start growing back a bit, and um, the first season kind of picks off with her 
recovering from cancer and now starting to go back into the workforce. And the show is setting on the west side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. So set set in the hey, shy, hey. But, but we kind of touch on, you know, the south side, downtown, north side, kind of try, trying to hit all areas of the city, but set in Chicago. And it's just really a story about a young millennial family that's uh, try, hasn't yet achieved their goals and are still trying to reach for them, but also has this young kid that they're trying to raise kind of in this uh, crazy city of ours. So Copy. crazy city of ours. Yeah. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. Like that's, <laughs> that's actually a good, good way to put it. That's uh, you just left there. It's a beauty, beautiful city, man. Yeah. I think Chicago might be. Yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody got something to say about it too. You know, it's politicians. Such a great you know what I'm saying? City, dog. It you is. Gotta, no, you gotta actually like, like it's not like everywhere else where you can read into what people tell you. Like you actually have to go and right. be there for a while and kind of have like a few experiences to where you can say, all right, like you're not gonna get this anywhere else. Yeah, like, yeah. There's a bunch of shit in Chicago where it's like you can go and do certain stuff, you can go eat certain food yeah. that you won't get anywhere else. Best food else. in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, you yeah. definitely can't get an Italian beef somewhere else. <laughs> no, nah, like, you really can't. You can't, you tripping. What part of the city are you from? So I'm from the Northwest side. So like okay. uh, Pulaski, Lawrence-ish, yeah. yeah. I used to stay on uh, Francisco. Oh yeah, I know what that's said. Yeah. That's cool. What? What? Oh, the Hispanic name. Ah, uh, got gotcha. you. So, the, uh, God. just carry on. Francis. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Isn't that Mexican though? Like, it's just got, like, it doesn't really fit, <laughs> but he just, he won't leave it alone. If you got, if you got, uh, if you could direct any uh, show that's out now. Oh man. What would you hop in? Like, hey, you know what? Let me get in there. Man, I want to do an episode. We need to tag you in. I want to direct everything, man. Like, I, I love it all. Like, uh, you know, love to get on some HBO things. Like, Winning Time, you know, would be awesome. Mm. Uh, I did an episode of Swagger. Oh, that's uh, coming out on Apple, uh, coming up in June. Swagger. Swagger is uh, Kevin. It's loosely based on Kevin Durant's kind of AAU experiences. Okay, okay. Oh. Yeah, so um, worked on that. It's just, I love it all, man. I love sitcoms, dramas. Like, I, I'm, I'm the type of person, man, like, I want to do everything at least once in life. You know what I'm saying? So ain't, I, I can't really say a specific show. Um, there have been a lot of classics, like Snowfall would have been great. Um, if it's got black folks in it, and they talking about something that's cool, I'm, I'm down. That's wrong. Is there a show from the past that you would have liked to have in uh, oh, man. other than Snowfall? The Wire, man. Yeah, The Wire mm. would have been fire. Yeah. Shout out to The Wire. He yeah. ain't never seen it. That's I, why he looked all I, weird. I, I've, seen, I've seen it. No, he know what it is. He ain't, no, 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 yeah. no. I just haven't seen it. Every Who's Bodie? Season Who's Bodie? The, Who's Bodie? <laughs> Who's Bodie? <laughs> Who's Bodie? Who's Bodie? I don't care. Exactly. Right now. I know you don't care. I'm watching, you didn't see, I'm that's watching why he's just like, oh, right he's just now. Like, that came uh, out and like. That's fine. What? Don't give me reasons. You don't have to give me. You don't, ex- you don't have to explain nothing. You don't What's owe me that? anything. What's that? 08? He what owes me nothing. Something like that. Something like what that. What we talking about? Yeah. We can't talk about It from. was before 08. Exactly. Yeah, well, like Come four on, or five, champ. something like that. Why you mad at me? <laughs> I just. I you didn't me. see it. Like, why you I upset? Ain't gonna lie. It's getting funny behind the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting funny. <laughs> you gave in to this clown. <laughs> John, you snitching, cheats. <laughs> this is hilarious. You now tuning in, man. It's Iman amongst men, man. They snitching behind the computer. <laughs> oh, well, let's get back to fatherhood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, big theme for us. Talk about being a girl dad. Yeah, you just had a daughter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She turns. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah, turned eight months uh, this Sunday. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 man. It's uh, it's it's amazing. He said it's uh, no, no, no. It's 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 hard. It's honestly like still, you know, she she finally kind of come into her personality a little bit. Yeah. You know, like not crying all the time. Now we getting the laughs and the and, and the giggles oh, and you're things. The emotions yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's great, man. I, it's it's the favorite thing I've ever done in the world, man. She yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, is, it, is it what you anticipated? In some ways and not in others. You know, like I, I wasn't prepared for the lack of sleep. <laughs> like, especially if you really tapping in, you know, oh, trying yeah. to trying to be a, a yeah. real partner and you know, I, I wake up some nights, you wake up the other nights. Oh, like bro. it's it was hard in the beginning, man. Oh, just like felt like a zombie. But um and I think one of the things I always kind of kept saying to myself was, man, I just can't wait till, you know, I, I, she, I, get, I get to get to that personality a bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just to really start seeing those different emotions. So oh, it's been great, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Was? Her name is uh, Theory. Theory Marie. Theory Marie. Yeah. 
Shout out to Theory. Yeah. Uh, softening softening your daddy up, boy. Yeah. Cheesing like a mug. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a set up, it's a setup, too, man. Oh, I'm telling you, it's a setup, man. Watch. It. It's going to start changing. Like, he enjoying himself. <laughs> you see, he enjoying himself. Now nah, he lighting up. Ooh, it's going to change. Eight months. Yeah, he, he want the emotions. They're going to be like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to give some emotions. I already know. I, I, I got a system, man. I already know. I, my favorite part of that, I, I miss uh, – my kids being real small and just laying on my chest. Yeah, like, yeah. It's nothing like. I hate to admit it, it's the helplessness. Like they can't do nothing for themselves, so they need you. Yeah. Like they really, really yeah. need you. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, uh, you can do that for yourself. Oh, I've taught you how to do it for yourself. <laughs> you know how to do it for yourself, but you just don't want to do it. Exactly. And you want to stand over me, and you want to try and move my hand to yeah, try request and do you. it. Like you ain't yeah. asked me to do it. I'm telling you, get oh, ready, yeah, you bro. You in for it, brother. Ooh, looking forward to it. You in for it, brother. Looking forward to it. There's going to be many more sleepless nights. Oh, yeah. I got you. <laughs> so I'm going to let y'all <laughs> See y'all babysit. Where you go, man? <laughs> yeah. uh, you went from being uh, Tracy, Ellis was Ro- Tr- Tracy Ellis Ross's PA. Yep. Yeah. Um, to directing an episode on Blackish. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. How's that full circle moment for you? It's crazy, man. Um. You know, I, I, when I was a PA on Girlfriends, it was my job to get all the cast out the trailer and, you know, bring them to set. So, you know, to go from that to actually directing her, yeah. um, it was crazy, man. Like, I, I honestly, I don't know if she remembered that I was a PA <laughs> and I wasn't about to tell her. I was like, let me get through this to make sure I don't, you know, So we just missed again. Huh? So no, we, no, no, no. Y'all, y'all good. I often say, John, Jesus Christ. No, no, no. Y'all yeah. good. Y'all good. I, I think she figured it out by now. <laughs> but no, it was, it was just, uh, uh, Blackish was a really special show, man. Like, they, uh, Oh, we they, watched this. Yeah, they had a great, great family watch. dynamic. Um, actually, Kenya Barris was uh, one of the writers on Girlfriends back in the day, too. Yeah, so it was like yeah. super full circle on a, a lot of different levels. Lena That's Waithe was the PA. Was a lot, lot of Prentice Penny. Shout like a lot of cats Ooh. came up off that show. So yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah. Did that? Did you have space. to like? Like, how'd you do it? Did you like? Like, how does that even come up? We mean like, like the get, the paths get crossed. Like, how does he go from the PA to? A, Oh, he, I mean, he was like, do you it. ask? Like, no, nah, no, honestly, it it's it's just doing it, man. Like directing specifically, like I can't speak to everything else. Right, maybe writing too. It's like you could learn all the info you want. You could see all the panels, do everything that you're supposed to quote unquote do. But at the end of the day, you got to just direct something and then get do, mess up on that. Direct again. Like and directing is hard because like it's the only job really in film where you need like. 20, 30, 40 different people to kind of collab with you on it. So a lot of it is like you really are just trying to sell yourself and sell your dream and sell the vision. Like, I know you ain't getting no real bread on this, but I got you on the lunch. You know, it's going to be fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're just trying to barter and do <laughs> whatever you fire. No, you got to barter and do whatever you got to do. You to say try that to, shit like, on the way get, out the get, door. Get, like, get, it's going to be fire. Like, don't hey, worry about that shit. Listen, it's going to be fire. Just, just make sure you show up. Sometimes you got to you gotta leave with the food because you definitely ain't going to leave with the money. Oh, so, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, just, you gotta just, it's like really just doing what you got to do to get to the next one and get to the next one. Like I, I really suffered from this idea of making it like early on, like, you know, seeing different peers that had started with me that kind of started really blowing up and doing their thing. And you're like, damn, like when shit gonna happen for me? Like I've been out here grinding and doing all the things they say you're supposed to do. But the thing I really have learned is like, it's less about making it and you just got to keep going at it again and again. And eventually like something's going to hit. Like I didn't know hair love. The first time I did an animated thing was going to be the one I had done like 50 different productions before that from videos and you just never know. And um, I think once you get away from assuming that this thing you're doing is going to be great, you just focus on it, you know, great things will happen. Straight up. Do you ever feel like um, within doing a project, if you said we didn't have money, is there other ways? Like, I mean, I know you was joking saying about <laughs> the food, but yeah. I'm just trying to be uh, somebody if I was a film director and I didn't have the money like how do you do that how do you go about getting it's because it's, it's like it's like to get a good actor you would yeah. need a good budget like do you do promise do you promise them producer credits do you it's like how do you like that. yeah 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 it's, how do you, how would a, how would somebody at home that's like a great film yeah and they like <laughs> they sitting at home I'm them they sitting at home they like dog I just need some like, I just need yeah. help you know a Hail Mary Bro, like, is that a hail mary su- move? I know you don't pull the oh, hail mary yeah. move. You you would be surprised how many f- directors. I'm sure y'all talked to a few of them too. Have like those moments where it's like, I'll give you an example. So when I was a PA on Girlfriends, this actor Oba Babatunde, you probably know him from like How High and 
uh, the Parkers. Like he's been in like in a lot of, he's like a really good character actor. Yeah. But I worked with them as a PA, brought him from the trailer to the set. And I, I loved how he worked. And I was like, yo, I'm, eventually I'm gonna do a movie and you know, I wanna try to cash you in it. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Didn't even know I was gonna fully direct, but I just dropped that seed. And then like maybe five years later in 2011, when I was getting my first joint together the last mm-hmm. fall, like I hit him and I was like, yo, like coming. Cashing I, I, I'm, in. I'm, yeah, I'm putting Real it together. Talk. I wanna see if you wanna be down to rock with it. And um, he was cool with it. And I think it's just, it's really about that. Like if people, is they either gonna believe in you or they're gonna believe in the story that you're trying to tell. Mm-hmm. And I think as long as you're transparent and you just like, cause I've seen many a uh, up and coming director reach out to Sterling K. Brown, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, somebody got a Stephen King book for the low just cause they like really love the story and they really was trying to just make it happen. Scare money don't make no money and a closed mouth don't get fed. So, Man. you know, as long as you are really passionate and are standing in what you're trying to do, like you'd be surprised how many people would just be down to rock cause you gotta imagine these people are already millionaires. They already making bread. So, what's your little bit of money gonna really do to change their situation? Like, they want to do good work and they want to stretch in ways that they haven't really been able to stretch in the work that they're doing. So, if you ro- reaching out to an actor that's never been a lead actor and they doing all these great character roles, and you're like, "Yo, I ain't got a lot of bread, but I got that lead role for you," you know, like that's what happened with Ryan and Michael, Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan. You know, Michael was doing all these great supporting roles, but he had never been a lead, and he reached out to Mike on some film school, like straight out of USC. Like I'm trying to really see you in that lead position. And he was able to look at him now. (laughs) Crazy. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes like you can gamble wrong, but people are really trying to like work with great up and coming voices that are like trying to like change the game. And you know, if you can get to them and social media makes it a lot easier, you just never know. That's crazy. It's it's wild. Like it's a a lot of people just don't want to reach out. They don't. Well, you know it's what not happens? even. A, it's a, it's a, it's like a, a pride thing. That's what I'm saying. Because it's the perception you thinking about how that person is going. You know, or play take you. Or, there you go. You thinking about how that person is going to react to you reaching out. But you know what? It you want to be in too? my movie art? Right, I got a lead role for you. I know you ain't never did nothing. Shit. I'm just trying it out. My bad. I'll do it, but I'm just throwing it out there. You gotta. You gotta. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be ambitious about the shit. Like, so well, you just gonna take it away? <laughs> Ouch! Have y'all Ouch. ever have, have y'all ever been in a situation too though where somebody will be bold, reach out, try to mm-hmm. get the contact, but then they never hit you? Like a lot of times people do it like that too, where they just seeing if you would say yes. Yeah, like and it, to me, it's, it's always the people that are or bold. might not need you anymore. Right. right. Oh, oh, like you took too long to reply. <laughs> not even that. Just like they just might not need you no more, or they got somebody else more important. So it'd be like, yo, whatever. Damn. But you see it like a lot of like a networking events, like a film festival, people be running up on folks like, yo, Denzel, let me get the info or, you know, Ava or whoever. And like nine times out of 10, they don't even reach out. And it's like it's that one out of 10 person that actually is going to like follow up and not necessarily be like, what can you do for me? But it's like, yo, like I'm an up and coming director. Like I would let it work on one of your sets for free and just to kind of see what it's like. Those are always the people that end up like moving forward because it's less about trying to take and more like I'm gonna give. Like I'm gonna try yes. to make your situation better, and you know now it's you can try no try try it out right. and see if it, it's a good fit. How long did it take you to find your team that you was like you know I got a good team? And like you know probably like a good five five or six years. You I know agree. it's just a matter of like you know you, you start with people as a PA and you see them grow and you end up growing too. So that PA position you. Yeah, he Shit, it sounds like if you yeah. want to go to fuck film school, it sounds like just start as a PA so you can what? just see it all. Cause that's well, that, literally, you what, know, everybody, you just said it like with the call sheet and shit like that. It makes most people just be like, yo, fuck this. Yeah. And I came here to Not act. on your I way to directing. To... Yeah. Uh, can't, you can't be that way. Not on the way to directing, boy. Well, Have a vision. God damn. Well, that's the thing too that <laughs> like gets a got lot of. First. But that's the thing that like a lot of people don't make it over time. They fall off because you know, the shit ain't easy. Like Straight this up. 12 hour days is a regular day. You you on your feet for 12 hours. Like a lot Man, of people, that's, that's, no that's gonna tap you Looking after motherfuckers too. Like, they yeah. might not need you. You might sit in the trailer for 12 hours. That's hard <laughs> as hell too, sitting yeah, in that man. trailer. It ain't for everybody. Man. Especially if that bathroom door don't stay closed, all right, and they got that. All right, man. All right, man. Like this man. I'm just what? trying to be. What kind of experiences you had? Yeah, honest. 
about the wrong thing, man. We're going we to switch it over. Like, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, to the crown. Uh, the crown act. The crown act. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. there you go. Uh, just got passed in Texas. Yeah, crazy. Uh, tell us about the audience behind that and, uh, you know, why it's so important to you. Yeah, you know, so the Texas thing is crazy just because the young man that we brought with us to the Oscars, DeAndre Arnold, you know, his whole situation happened in Texas. So, you know, four or five years later, now he's seeing, like, his hard work and his sacrifices led to kids that are younger than him. They ain't never going to have to deal with not being able to graduate or told they got to get out of school because they got locks or long hair. So, That's um, disgusting, by the way. Yeah, it's crazy. But, yeah, the Crown Act to me is just important because it essentially will allows us to be ourselves no matter where we are. As you all know, like there's certain jobs outside of entertainment where, like, you want to be a lawyer, you gotta you can't have them, 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 them braids or them locks. You know, you can't have long hair. You want to be a police officer military, like different things, like your facial hair is literally a requirement. Like you have to wear it a certain way. Wait, and wait, 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 what? Yeah, yeah, like you know in the army and shit, you can't have a beard and all that. You gotta shave. Yeah, I'll take that back. Uh, police officers gotta wear their facial yeah. hair a certain way. Yeah. No, yeah. it de- it depends though. It depends on which state, 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 which state, state and things, but yeah, yeah, there's definitely certain requirements. Um, and I've there have literally been cases they like kind of tied to the, to the Crown Act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, you can't look like the ops. <laughs> you want them out there looking like you? They not finna do that. <laughs> this man, he just. Oh. Oh, why did I never notice that? Look, why didn't I know? How, how I know? Because they got big ass mustaches, <laughs> big ass glasses. Yeah, like, they do. I already fight like he got the cop mustache. Like that's because he got to do that. That's crazy. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they had that full beard that. if they could for sure. Um, how do y'all want to work that job? <laughs> They love it. <laughs> like for so, like you could have went to film school with that six months. Yeah, there's no cops in here though. Like he was, you were looking around like we got cops in. The <laughs> I was looking at the cameras. You feel me? I was looking at those at home that you know what I'm saying. Like God bless you on that road to do what you're doing when you're serving and protecting as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and shit. But damn, boy, yeah. you gonna sign up for that? You can't even wear your your facial hair. Yeah, it's crazy. But I mean, and there are a lot of jobs even outside of that where, and it's crazy, they just are literally policing how hair grows out of your body naturally. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, you can't fully be yourself. And thousands of stories of young girls, you know, want to be cheerleaders. Oh, you can't have them braids. Mm -hmm. Your hair got to be straight like ours. That's crazy. You know, you want to go to this like academy or this private school, you know, no braids, no locks. So, you know, for me, the crown act is just, it's, a weird law and that it shouldn't have to exist in the first place, mm-hmm. but I'm glad it does because now you have a legal ground to stand on. You're a student, you're in the school, they say you can't you're not gonna allow you to graduate if you wear them braids and them locks or that curly hair. Now you can literally have a foot to stand on and say, I'm a sue and you know, this is literally illegal. So Take legal legal action. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's it's not and in every state yet. Um we it's not in every state. We're hoping that it gets passed on a legal level. I mean on a federal level, but um yeah, it's it's a start and um it's, it's been doing a lot of good. Man, shout out to that shit. Yeah, shout out to the crown that straight up. Yeah, yeah. Support. A lot a lot of great people on the ground putting in work, you know. I love that. I just love that they called it a crown. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like keeping the hair just mm, natural. Just, yeah, but it's like our hair just roll. Like, I know it get nappy. I know it make the sound when we scratch it. But it's still raw. You feel me? Like we could still work still that. You thing. can't. You can't name like negative things about it and then be like, yeah, but it's still good. Yeah, it's still like, good. No, just, so, cause just say you, it's nice. You put a little product on this hill. Listen. <laughs> But that's the thing. It's like put product on it or don't. It's little all spray good. bottle on this thing. You're <laughs> part of the wrong group. Man, listen, <laughs> dog. I'm telling you how we get it right, boy. You get it right. Yeah. A little leave-in conditioner on this here. <laughs> <laughs> Lay down See, real smooth. The wrong yeah, me. stuff. Yeah, me. <laughs> that's the wrong stuff. But anyway, Matt, we like to ask all of our guests here at the Mind Amongst Men, what are you working on in your personal life right now? Mm. What are you trying to improve? Mm. You know, I think it's just being present in in the in the in the moments that are right in front of you. You know, like I think when you work in entertainment, you're always thinking about the next thing. It's always like a little bit of this rat race of trying mm-hmm. to get to the next big thing. And you know, having a daughter for me at least is really just let me appreciate this, the moments, just being present. 
I, I think that's really the biggest thing I'm trying to work on because you know we have big ideas and you're always yeah. trying to make something happen. No, you could really look past what's in front of you. So, so just slowing down a little bit. Oh yeah, sense. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I could agree. I think right now that's exactly what I'm on. I'm just trying to be in the room that I'm in sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just appreciating where you at, man. Like it's not a I can't do everything that I want to do tomorrow. Right. You right? just. That excitement, there is an excitement in pre- prepping it yeah, in your mind, sure. though, and envisioning it. But it's just like being happy to be in the room that you're in and yeah. being cool with saying them same 50 text messages is going to be there as soon as I get over there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I think that's a big thing that's a little tricky with you know technology. Like, it's great that things are moving forward, but it's like you know, back in the day, the voicemails and the answer machines, like you didn't have to get at people right right away. Like people didn't have access to you twenty four seven. And it wasn't it wasn't a problem. Like that's the thing. Now right. we expect it because we just we already know. Like you should have your phone on you. Everybody got their phone on them, so <laughs> yeah. you need to respond. But it's like back then you could leave a voicemail and somebody not gonna trip. You get back to them 15, 20, 30 minutes later, or right. or the next day, and they ain't yeah, tripping. Yeah. You know what I mean. And now, like, so you miss a call, somebody hitting you on Twitter, they on the IG DM, like, they go hit Checking you Checking your shit, yeah. Man. Like, you, you posting stories and you never, you didn't hit Stuff me back. Man, man. People, be, people be waiting. <laughs> it's like people wait for your bubble to just light up. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they do it, they just skip ah, they be like, ah. Exactly. They skip past anything they was going to do on Instagram yeah, no, and text yeah, you right the away. Or call you window. right away. Like, I just saw you post up, so right. I know you on your line. Like, mm-hmm. God. Yeah, and to them, like we were just talking about before, like that's perception. So to them, they look like, man, he don't give a fuck about what I'm talking about. Oh, for sure, yeah. Like so, that's why it's you know. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. It's tricky. Sometimes you just you just don't. Oh no, and people okay. know that. That's and you got to be okay with that. That's what it is. Yeah. We got to graduate to the point where we realize some people just don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's what back in the day when you didn't have a phone, you realize some people don't care. Like, yeah. and it's cool. Like yeah. you learn to. Like I shouldn't care either. I could carry on, yeah. and do, something hours. Yeah, right. get, do something with that two hours. Yeah, like, do something with that two hours. Like be productive. Yeah, <laughs> do something sure. with that two hours. Yeah. <laughs> do something. Anything you want to promote? I know you yeah, just you just you just dropped drops. that you got a lot of stuff coming. So now yeah. it's your time to lay it all out for us. <laughs> right. You feel yeah. me? Make yeah. sure you give me your uh, your Instagram, Twitter, you. all that. That you call list. Yeah, no, we uh, you know, we got this uh, a- this baby board book called Hair Love ABCs that's coming out in August, August 29th. Oh. Um. Is basically like, you know, the most smaller books for babies. That's like A is for Afro, N is for natural. Like we basically kind of took that whole concept and just made it like super black. Like, you know. <laughs> super black. Yeah, super yeah, black, yeah. Super all, black. All, them, all them words got something to do with, 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 with us. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so really excited about that. Uh, and yeah, Young Love is going to be uh, coming out very well, soon. Wait a what was it? What was that called? Hair yeah. Love ABCs. Hair yeah. Love ABCs. Yeah. yeah. Hair love it should ABCs. be in a bookstore everywhere near you soon. And then, uh, yeah, Young Love, you know, the the, the spinoff of uh, the Hair Love short film, the, the yeah. series that's coming out uh, sometime this uh, upcoming fall. So look out so for that, too. You on Max. It's on Max? Yes. Yeah, it's going to come out on Max. Yep. Uh, you trying to run that run that Oscar back? Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, probably be an Emmy on, on this one because it's more TV, oh, yeah, but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, I don't know the difference. I got an Emmy, though. There you go. Hey. I got one of them. So now I got to get an Oscar, man. You, got, you know what I'm saying? I got a film. Get that EGOT. You know what I'm saying? I, I got this raw story though. I need you to play a Dominican guy in the um in the film though. <laughs> hey man, I want to give a thank you to our guest, man, Matthew Cherry. Give yeah, it up for him. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate y'all, man. All love. <laughs>